roll in year 13, shirt and buttons undone, sleeves rolled up, bit of the charm, bit of the chat and get the A star. Hello and welcome back the Medication Nation. As always, my name is Krish Goro. I'm a fourth year medic at Imperial College London and boy do I have a banger of a video for you guys today where I'm going to be walking you through my entire med school application process from start to finish with the hope of demystifying the med school application process but also show you what I did and when. Also, as we say, hindsight is 2020, so make sure you learn from the things that I could have done better to make sure it's smooth sailing for you guys. As always, timestamps are on screen now and in the description. Now, I'm looking to make this a series, so if there are any areas that you guys want me to go in depth on in the future, make sure you comment that down below and I will be sure to deliver. As always, cue that intro and let's go. In the beginning. So, at the very beginning of my medical school application journey, GCSEs. Now, during GCSEs, honestly, I had no idea what I wanted to do as a career, so I decided to try my hardest to get the best possible grades and keep the largest number of doors open. Fast forward a summer holiday later, some more maturation, a bit of work experience, and a few house episodes later, back in my mind, we had maybe medicine is the career for me. So I chose A-level subjects that would allow me to apply to UK medical schools, but more importantly, and mainly, I chose subjects that I genuinely enjoyed, and that was biology, chemistry, and maths. Now, a bit of a rogue one here, I also took a gamble on choosing psychology because I was just generally intrigued. Now, a few weeks into year 12, I joined MedSoc, and I highly, highly, highly recommend you guys do this too. Reason being is you're with like-minded people with similar aspirations and ambitions, and you can also keep up to date with what everyone else is doing. You know, you have access to year 13s for any advice, any questions. You're finding more about medicine as a career. And also many, many opportunities came through the MedSoc door for me. Now, a few weeks more into year 12, I quickly realized I messed up with choosing psychology. I just wasn't enjoying it. And we had an upcoming test and I just could not revise that textbook. So I was like, you know what? Not enjoying it. Let's drop it and let's do an EPQ instead. And that was one of the best decisions. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And the EPQ that I did was proton therapy versus radiation therapy for cancer treatments. And that was actually inspired by a MedSoc ethical discussion on the Asher King case. And also doing that EPQ actually allowed me to visit the UCLH proton beam therapy development. So it really opened up a lot of opportunities and I'm so glad that I did the EPQ. So now on to the work experience. Now, as I alluded to previously, MedSoc was king in terms of giving me the opportunities. In fact, one of the external speakers offered me some work experience there and then on the spot to do some atrial fibrillation screening at his GP practice. Now, not only was I able to gauge an understanding of the different aspects of primary care and how it worked, but I was also able to contribute to a life-saving NHS screening program, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Now, during this program, I gained a fascination of the importance of the heart and almost a passion for cardiology that grew from this experience. So it prompted me to organize a work experience placement in a cardiology department of my local hospital. I was able to do things like auscultate the murmurs. I was able to go into cath labs, shadow consultants, shadow FY1, FY2s, taking bloods, etc. Saw all types of things. However, one of the main takeaways that I took was the empathetic and caring role that doctors and in fact all members of the MDT show on a day-to-day -day basis. Now in order to check that I had the you know, ability to develop these qualities and I actually enjoyed this aspect of the job, which is a large proportion of it, I did some volunteering. Now I volunteered at a local care home, but I also volunteered to help disabled kids learn how to swim. So both ends of the age spectrum. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it and it really helped solidify that medicine is indeed the career that I wanted to pursue. So now onto the juicy stuff, the AS exams, the BMAT and the UCAT examinations. Now the AS exams were essentially end of year 12 mocks and I knew I needed to boss these exams in order to get the predicted grades I needed for medical school. So we put in the work, we put in the hard yards. Unfortunately, this message was lost with a lot of my mates who thought they could roll in year 13, shirt and buttons undone, sleeves rolled up, bit of the charm, bit of the chat and get the A star and predicted. Unfortunately, that's not how it quite works. You have to put the work in. 
Year 12 summer, we banged the UCAT exam. All we did for that was practice, 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 online question banks, question books, no course needed, and we sailed through that. And then on to the BMAT exam, which was done at the end of October. Now, I actually started revising for this mid-September, which is earlier than recommended. Reason being is I knew that I had a two-week holiday planned in the October half term. And yes, the BMAT exam was straight after that. So I needed that in conjunction with the fact that three out of my four choices, because I'm a risk taker, were BMAT unis. So, you know, those two combined meant that I had the added pressure to start early, but it also meant that I actually booked a BMAT course. Reason being, I felt this added pressure. However, on reflection, it wasn't really that necessary, to be honest with you guys. They aren't necessary. The biggest thing you guys can do is practice, practice, practice. Now, for me in the BMAT, I would say section one is something that I found the hardest. And I wish I knew about the TSA papers that would have added the practice for the section one. Section two, we scored highly in and section three, we banged a 4.5 A, which I was very happy about. So overall, we had a strong BMAT. So now it's the start of year 13. UCAS applications are due. Shit is getting real. And that's right. The start of year 13 is very, very, very hectic. You have many, many things going on. Your UCAS applications, your personal statement, your BMAT, your A-levels. You know, it's all coming into one. Very, very stressful. So, you know, one big thing that I'd recommend for you guys is think about your personal statement before you actually start year 13. It's something I wish I did, which would really have helped ease that workload and release some stress. So in terms of the choices, the juicy part. So what I did is I went for a three BMAT to one UCAT ratio. And now I wouldn't recommend this normally. It is a high risk strategy. I would normally advise 50-50 to split your risk. However, from my point of view, my thinking at the time was that, listen, med school is a six year process. You want to enjoy it and you want to excel there. So I would rather choose a uni that I would most likely enjoy and that more suits my learning style than a uni that I would just get into. So yes, it's a risky strategy, but high risk, high reward, baby. So we've sent off the UCAS application. We've done the BMAT. We can start to breathe a little. I know interviews can be quite stressful. However, if you put in the work, you should receive the interviews and the interviews will roll through. I managed to receive three interviews out of the four places I applied to. And we worked hard for those interviews and we managed to secure offers from all three places that we interviewed at, which was Cardiff, Imperial, and UCL. So very, very happy about that. In fact, interviews was one of my favorite parts of the application process. I loved the intellectual challenge, the conversations that we had. It was really, really enjoyable for me. And in terms of interview format, I had two panel interviews and one MMI. However, now all of these universities are MMI now. So now it's time to firm our choices. And I actually went for Imperial 1 and UCL 2. Now, this may be stupid in some people's eyes because they were both the same grades. And I actually had an AAA offer from Cardiff. However, when I went there, I realized I couldn't see myself being here for six years and enjoying it. Now, a big lesson learned here, guys. Make sure you guys actually visit the unis that you want to apply to. On paper, Cardiff was perfect. It had everything I, I wanted, I needed. It suited my learning style. However, when I went there, I just couldn't see it. It's the final hurdle. We have to pass these A-levels. Now, A-levels was extremely stressful for me because in one of my weaknesses is once I have a goal, it's tunnel vision and therefore other things get neglected and those other things were in fact the big bad A-levels. So I did neglect these. I had to really pull my socks up to catch up and make sure that I was able to secure those offers. And as a consequence, I was sleep deprived. I was grinding all day, all night, and I do not recommend this. In fact, I think it did more harm than good. I think I overworked myself and there is a big, big importance of sleep before exams. Ever since A-levels, I've always slept eight hours. You know, I rocked up to the exam, shirt untucked, red eyes, it was very, very, very bad. It's not good for your health and it's not good for your exam performance. So guys, make sure you sleep for exam. That's one big lesson that I learned. Thankfully, we secured the bag. We secured the offers and we made it to Imperial.
Thank you very much for tuning in to another banger of a video. It's you being your boy tomorrow's medic. Now remember guys, run that drill, like, subscribe, share the video. I hope this video has been useful in terms of giving you guys an insight into my application journey. And remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Chess baby, Medication Nation over and out. Sheesh. La 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 la, it's the D-O-double-G.